So, is this working? Okay, that's fine. Can you all hear me? <laughs> Hello. Uh, this morning is uh, this session is about the Gooseberry project, as you can see, um, and we'll focus more on the creative aspect of it. So, we'll talk about uh, the script, the evolution of the project, these targets as an artistic project. We'll talk about designs also, the characters and the environments. 
So we'll focus more on the art side of the project. Um, there is a talk after from, from, from Tan more about the technical point of view. So I think the pipeline and the development will be more um, evoked on this talk, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. No? That, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, pipeline development. So um, does this work? Yes. Let's talk about, because we are in the pre-production stage of the movie. It's been three months. We are working on it. And um, I'll try to summarize where we are right now. So, um, hi, this is me. <laughs> Younger and out of jail, so. <laughs> um, I was, um, uh, I'm making movies for almost 10 years now. Uh, I've made lots of different ones, uh, some CGs, some not CGs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, some are funny, some are quite uh, dark also. I've made various stuff, but mostly with CG, a lot of uh, um, live action shooting too with CG characters, stuff like that. So uh, again, I've made some very poetic and dark things or very funny and simple things. It depends on the projects, but well, this is a quick show up of some of the characters I've worked on. Oh, it's a bit slow, sorry. So, and I, would, I, would, I wanted to ask you, um, because Tan, every year when he started the Blender conference on the keynote, asked uh, how many conferences you attended. So I want to do quite the same thing about uh, movies and TV. So I wanted to ask you, because I know that Blender users are very various. Uh, they are not only film related. I know that there is games, architectures, designs, science, lots of things that are involved on it, but I wanted to just know who we are working for, like who is the audience and who watch movies and how, how passionate people are about this. So I just wanted to ask you how many people in this room went to a film festival once this year? <laughs> I tricked you. So this year, and in general, Okay, so almost everyone, so that's good. Um, and I also, just to have a quick idea, wanted to know um, how many goes to a cinema at least once a week? Ah. Ah. At least once a month? Ah, that's better. <laughs> and once a year? <laughs> or less than once a year? <laughs> okay. Never. Yeah, is there someone that I've never been to a cinema? <laughs> well, because they, yeah, but you don't have any in your country, so that's fine. <laughs> um, how many, the same thing for how many movies you, do you watch home? So, like, do you watch one movie per week at least? Oh, okay, so everybody watch movies. Oh, that's good. So this doesn't make sense then. <laughs> and I'll ask the same question for TV series, for episodes. Oh, uh, at least, yeah, at least once a week, something like this. Well, I guess everybody follows TV series, so, okay. So, um, how the Gooseberry Project started? Well, uh, last year I was invited by Tom at the Blender conference. Uh, the, 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 the idea Tan had, the vision he had for the project was uh, already discussed for at least one year, I guess, um, to have multiple studios working on the feature films. They were independent studios uh, with artistic freedom that will work on the whole feature film project. And uh, I was invited at the Blender conference thinking I was one of the studios, the Paris one, and uh, he finally proposed me to uh, enjoy the whole movie, <laughs> which was quite a surprise. And uh, I accepted and we talked a lot about it just to see how, what was Tom's vision about it, what he envisioned for this project and how we can make it work. And we also started to discuss the possible directions this project could, could have from a movie point of view. So um, it, it, there was three main directions we discussed. The first one was the cadavre exquis, which is a French thing. I tried to translate it, but 
I don't know how. So I don't know if you ever played this game. You take a piece of paper, you start uh, drawing the head of a character, you fold it, you give it to someone else. He does the second part of it, and as it goes, so no one knows how it looks like at the end, but everybody draw a part. So it was the idea that every studio would be totally independent and don't really know what happens to the previous one and start at the final frames of the movie and goes uh, on like this. It was one idea. The second one was to have um, one story, one script, and every studio would be totally free to direct its own scene out of it. And the third one was to have quite the same thing, but to uh, focus more on the storytelling part to uh, make it more coherent and just focus on the artistic directions that are changing from studios. So this also leads to, well, what kind of movie can it be then? Because um, uh, what story could fit those, uh, those concepts, those ideas? And more importantly, what audience are we trying to reach? So. Uh, I started to work on lots of things and ideas. Uh, I, don't, didn't, I don't show everything because I have shitloads of this. So we go back to the question like, what is the audience? What are, for who are we trying to make a movie? Which is a very important question, I think. And um, the first question that brings it is, well, does it matter, really? So. Two main direction comes from it. If you don't care about your audience, you can take any risk you want. You can make the most crazy movie you ever made, uh, but you take a lot of risks and you can also make a very, very shitty movie and that, that can happen. Or you're trying to secure more and you have a more um, um, success story kind of uh, way of thinking it. So you, you focus on what works, what always works, and you try to make something very secure and you don't take many risks. So basically, it goes to having the decision of making an independent film or a studio movie. Um, if you want some examples, you can compare from, uh, I don't know if you know those two films, which are very small budget and independent animation movies, um, which are very good, actually. If you didn't saw them, I can encourage you to do it. Or if you compare this to like the very big mainstream studio movies, which are the total opposite, with shitloads of money and a very, very secure way of making a movie. But it works. <laughs> so, uh, so to define Gooseberry then, well, it's quite obvious it's an independent movie. We don't have the same resources as big studios, so uh, we were crowdfunding the project, so we, we had few resources. And well, the question was also related to uh, what kind of movie it becomes. Because is there any animation independent movies? Well, not really at the moment, because animation is very, very... Uh, expensive, so you need uh, very big budgets to do it, and we don't. So it, it, it narrows down the possibilities, and we had small resources. But that's the main um, uh, good thing about it is that we also have lots of freedom. We can do almost everything we can. Uh, we don't have limitations. We don't have constraints, artistically speaking. So that's very very exciting to work on. But there's also some problem out of it, <laughs> of course, is that we have, um, if we have multiple worlds and multiple graphic directions, or even multiple directing scenes uh, and directors, we'll have something that can become also experimental, like very weird movie and not very mainstream movie, not very narrative either. And we don't have a lot of experienced artists. Uh, I'm the first one not to be good enough for those kind of things. I don't have a lot of experience either. so. We also have to develop our tools at the same moment. So we always work with tools that are always changing a bit, improving, but also sometimes uh, that doesn't work. So we have to fix it and it, it slows down a bit the process. We have a tough public, <laughs> which is the online community, which is um, uh, often very, very tough and critic. So we have to face it and embrace it how we can, because we have to take good things out of it and not be too, uh, depressed or um, f too worried about it either. And it's also a disillusioned audience because they see everything we do. So we won't surprise the, p the people that follow us on the project by the movie at the end. Almost everything would be known. So that's also quite difficult for, for us to be able to bring the magic to it. But 
and we also have a low, low budget. But those kind of things are very, very good for the creative process because it helps you focus on what's important, which is what we want to make, what we want to tell, what we want to show, and we have to find workarounds. We, we know that we don't have a lot of resources. We cannot do anything, so we have to be very, very careful about how we work and how we want to show the movie at the end. Uh, a very good example would be, I don't know if you remember, Joe's from Steven Spielberg. I think everybody has seen this movie. They had very, very big limitation. The, uh, the shark was terrible. It looked like shit. So they basically decided not to show it in the movie because it was too fake. So out of this limitation, they, they, they managed to make a very, very scary movie without actually showing it too much. So the audience was actually more scared from what they don't see from what they do see. So there's lots of things like this. If you are clever enough, it's, it can be a good thing to not have a lot of money. So we went to many, many directions. Uh, this project started uh, one year ago, so we had many, many variations of the script. So I, did, I, won't, I won't show you the scripts, but ideas we had for titles and ideas I had for uh, just visuals out of the movie. So it was early researchers. As you can see, there's always something related to washing machines. <laughs> and then it becomes uh, the Cosmos Landromat. So um, I won't go into the detail of those ideas right now. I just wanted to show you rough things. And of course, uh, now it's the spoiler alert moment. So if you don't want to be spoiled, well, the, this will last for 20 minutes at least. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the main target for this was to, for the script, for the script part was to secure this concept to have multiple worlds into the core of the story so that you cannot tell this story without this concept. So that was the m most struggling thing we had to deal with at the beginning. And I had to work first with uh, Regis Jolin in France, um, which is a scriptwriter I have worked with pre pre uh, before, which is a very good scriptwriter, but um, he was t too much struggling about uh, the main theme of the movie, which is, as you can see, this color uh, about love, mostly. So he, str he struggled a lot. And then uh, I met Esther, which is here, so she might join me a bit to talk a bit about it. Uh, what's next? You want to talk about this or <laughs> should I continue? Um, right, yeah, well, that's a, good, that's a good starter to start with a love story. Um, the good thing I think was that we, we uh, really understood or it started basically from Mathieu's idea of the core of the story and I could really relate to it. So what we worked on mostly in the beginning, we were sitting there for a, a weekend or something or three days at the Blender Institute fed by Tom with cookies and coffee and all kinds of things. Um, and we worked on the, what is really the, the, the core of the story. So what is the theme? What is the feeling that you want to walk out of the cinema with, if you ever go to a cinema, that is. Um, and we really agreed on this. And we could really both feel it, but we had to grasp it still. So first, we talked a lot about what is that really, what is that theme? What is it really? And then we started to work on how do we, how on God's earth are we going to make it work? That you have a main character who changes shape, who changes um, uh, environment, and then still you want to go along with him, and still you believe it, and still you feel with him. And it's basically, to be honest, everyone, this is storytelling suicide, right? So we're trying to do something that's basically impossible because when I teach at the Film Academy, I also say to my students, if you want to make something, then you have to start from the core and then build from the inside out and not from the outside in. And now we basically have sort of uh, one thing is that we know is that we want to use all the talents all over the world from all these different people who can make these wonderful animations and we want to put all these different worlds into one story is is really hard it's really hard and um but i think it's going really well so far but what is go what is happening at the moment is that we are still trying to find we're always trying to get back to the core which means that we try out different things Mathieu comes with new ideas i come with new ideas basically the whole team does that and then we try them out 
I write a new version of the script, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and then again, and then, uh, <laughs> and then we try it out in the animatic, and then we find out there that certain things don't work, or we stray too far from the core of the story. And then basically I have to cut things down back to what that core is that we basically agree on very well. So that's a very good thing about this project. Then, um, yeah, that's where we are still, actually. Yep. So, and, and it's true, what Mathieu says is that it's really hard in the sense that we have a very tough audience, which is fine, but uh, this, this process of trying out the story and then seeing it on the screen and then finding out what works and what doesn't is very special about animation because I also write, at the moment I'm writing for a political drama series, which is totally different. But basically then you take a script, you go onto the set and you have your actors and they try out things and then you see what works and what doesn't and then in the editing, you tell the story again. And here we have to do all of that beforehand. And uh, it's a real challenge. But um, yeah, so, so far so good. And, uh, but what we are show, are you gonna show the, some of the animatic? Yeah. All of it? Uh, not all of it. Please. Thank God. Um, <laughs> I was just showing it to my sister at home and she is like, she has nothing to do with film. And she, but the good thing was that she really did understand the, the core of it, of our main character and the problem. But some things that we also we both worry about, it, she immediately picked them out. So I'm gonna just go back to the writing table and just, Please. you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna cut things out. Okay, so um, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, th that also leads us to discussing the tone of the movie, which is uh, again very poetic, very romantic movie. Um, it's uh, even though it's uh, very visual, it's, it has to have a, a pace and um, and an in indie tone out of it. Uh, we also discussed limitation for the audience. If we are making a kids movie or not, um, it's not. But it's uh, also not only for adults. So we might have PG-13, maybe not. We are not trying to force it. So we'll see what happens. But it's 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 for everyone. Uh, I've already talked about this, so that's fine. Um, so now I just wanted to talk a bit about the script, what, what the story is about, how, what it looks like. So again, I have to talk. Uh, images will come, I will show you. <laughs> so, well... <laughs> Um, so we are always working on the on the feature film story and on the pilot also. So we decided to make the pilot the 15 first minutes of the whole film. So basically we want to be sure that when you finish the 15 minutes of the pilot, you desperately want to see the 17, the 70 more minutes that are after. So it's not, it, we are not designing this to be very frustrating, like ah, what happens next, but you have to feel that there is at least one hour more behind it. That's our main goal. So the whole story is um, about, it's a bit mythological. At first, uh, we have a main character, which is called Victor, that is kind of an angel that was doomed for eternity to recreate love. He was in love with the wrong person. He was kind of a god, and he fell in love with a human. And he was doomed, uh, because this cannot happen in God's world, usually. So he was doomed to uh, recreate love if he wanted to grab his love back. So, weirdly, this guy designed a Cosmos Landromat, which is a real Landromat. And in each washing machine, he has access to every world that exists. So, he, through them, he picks two characters and decide to uh, send them through all those machines in a specific order and order and in a specific amount of time to create love out of them. So he basically tries to build love out of two person through a journey he designed for them. And that's our story. So that's what happens to our two main characters, Frank and Tara. They have been picked by this guy and sent through those journeys just to fall in love together. And the main question is, would it work or not? Well, I don't want to spoil everything, so. But we know. You don't know yet. Oh. No, we know. <laughs> we don't? Well, we might not know, so. <laughs> we'll change our mind, I'm sure, three times. <laughs> it has to change. Yeah. We have time for it to change, so. Um, so then we, it leads to, we have three main characters, and now we'll talk about the character design a bit. So, um, 
I just explain you who is Victor, basically, and it was the character we had the most struggle on because he has many, many faces possible. Because since he's such a mythological figure, we went to many, many directions. He's related to love, he's related to God, he's related to a lot of things, to angels, to many, many figures. So we had lots of uh, directions possible, lots of designs. We worked with David Revoir on it, we worked with Sarah on it. And uh, it was like a ping pong at first, but then slowly Sarah took over. Uh, come on. <laughs> so, uh, Thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, these are the first David's designs. Sorry. Oh, okay. There is a reference of Barry White, as you can see. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, Victor was uh, really a really a controversial character since the beginning. So we've been like uh, thinking about him for months. <laughs> so uh, as you can see, he went like from a black fat guy to a thin a blonde guy to. Well, we also went through the big. Uh, blonde guy and also <laughs> so it's really uh, it, it went through all, all the all the personalities <laughs> he could do um, so the idea was um, he had to have a, a deep uh, history like he, he has a drama in his life and uh, we wanted uh, to show it uh, somehow it should it, it, like uh, the main um, Mm, struggle was that uh, when you see uh, Victor for the first time, you have to, like to ask a question: like, Who's that guy? Like, where is he from? <laughs> and uh, and that was that was kind of the the thing that was kind of uh, hard uh, of having without being cliche, without without um, yeah, <laughs> like uh, finding something new. Anyway. Yeah, I mean uh, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't have to be too obvious. We were really struggling on the fact that he has to feel a bit broken. That you instantly feel that he has a lot of history. It's not cliche. You have to feel how deep he can be. So there it goes. Okay. So we went to this, which is your design. Yeah. Uh, so that that was uh, the, the the final design. Uh, that was yeah, like. Uh, it's really recent, <laughs> and uh, it made uh, like it's still uh, it was still controversial. Controversial, like no, not not everybody. Uh, well, after after all the history of Victor, like why this one and what? Why not the black guy or why not? But uh, the thing is, um, the like the last uh, research we did was trying to uh, was seeing like uh, Robinson Crusoe. References, because uh, Robinson Crusoe is a guy that has a lot, uh, a lot, like has lived a lot and is a bit used. So that's why he has a beard. Like uh, we have to feel that uh, he he's beautiful. He's a, a beautiful guy because he's cupidon in some somehow. So he has to be uh, handsome, but also we have to feel that he's a bit uh, used. You know, like. Uh, He's been like uh, letting himself go a little bit, so uh, we we agreed that uh, that uh, this uh, red-headed guy could work, <laughs> and yeah, and we started like uh, developing it, and uh, that's that's how Victor ended right now. Yeah, um, and then from um, drawing to 3D because we have uh, Angela, which was uh, modeling on Sintel too. She was making uh, awesome 3D models for Sintel and she worked for us too now. So that's her first uh, versions of it. Oh, that's twice the same. Uh, Is maybe, it? yeah. Oh, it's, it's the same. It's, <laughs> it's okay. Um, and here it goes. So it's very first models, first uh, draft models for layout mainly. So this is where victory is. So uh, to summarize it, it's, again, it was very tricky to have this 
back and forth and all those directions. As you can see, it was very confused at first, but we had to narrow it down and, and be sure what was the, that's the good thing about those kind of processes. You can really pick what is important for the character. So we wanted him to be, to have a, an eternal feeling, so the Rubinson Crusoe thing, which is trapped, and, and uh, he is trapped literally, so having him a bit um, used as he is with a long beard was a very good idea. Having red, red head hairs is also something good because it brings back some devil myth that is in cultural, in, in usually in uh, main cultures, ideas is that red head uh, has to be killed. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't really know why, but it's often the case. Um, and we wanted to be him to be also quite elegant, and uh, because still he has to uh, evoke some kind of romanticism feeling. So we agreed on deciding that this has all those key things into it. Even though maybe some other design were, uh, had interesting stuff too, they won't uh, filled enough with everything we needed. So let's go to our other character now. <laughs> it's not a design, it's a real one. Uh, oh, fuck, that's broken, sorry. Uh... Oh, that's something broken, sorry. You shouldn't see that in that order, so let me just check it. Yeah, hello. <laughs> well, this is Frank. <laughs> oh, sorry, you don't see anything. Uh... Uh... Frank Design, yeah, that's him. Hello. So this is our main character. And um, he was more obvious, even though it's, it's also tricky because obvious characters then uh, becomes very tricky to be original. So Frank is uh, a sheep living on an island, uh, which is basically a prison, very, very small island. You cannot ex escape from it. He's very bored, and it's been like 40 years. He's on this small island, and he wants to desperately escape. He wants to um, enjoy life. He knows there's something else than this tiny, tiny island. So our main references was... Well, that guy first, which is <laughs> quite used, but yet tender, um, or something like this, too, can work. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a sheep, that works. <laughs> and, um, and gathering all those things into, into a ship was also a struggle. We had this, a bit of the same process with David and Sarah trying to do ping pongs. Uh, so this is first David designs uh, of a tired, old, uh, depressed sheep. But it's not a character that has given up. It doesn't have to be too sad. So it was always a, a balanced idea to have him trapped into his own fur, stuff like that. So we had many, many variations out of it. And then we decided to pick this one, which is, again, Sarah's. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, uh, as Mathieu said, uh, the ship was also kind of a struggle. It was also like um, uh, about a style. There was a, a lot of discussion about style and what style, what style is needed for the first world. And uh, so the ship went uh, from really caricature to really realist. And then um, we tried to, came, to come back. Uh, actually, like uh, the, the really... Can I come? Yeah, that's, can I go back? It's tricky. Yeah, like uh, this this uh, apparel from da David. Uh, it wasn't one of the first one that he did. Like I don't know, the first day, yeah. I think, <laughs> the second the day. Second yeah. day. Like and uh, really, really thought that it was really good. Uh, that it was at the same time pathetic and uh, and proud, and which was really. <laughs> Uh, done for next? Okay. So, after uh, going in a, uh, making 3D tests and everything, uh, we decided to, to try to go back a bit uh, to the origin, uh, to the fir this first drawing, but also uh, th there you can see uh, the caterpillar <laughs> also, because uh, I mainly was working uh, at the, uh, on the Dragon World at that, at that moment. And so uh, when it was like moment to wrap it up, like to have like final characters um, for modeling, uh, and it's really important that we recognize Frank um, in the jungle and in the like in all worlds, of course. So basically, uh, the final sheet design is uh, 
retaking the uh, David's aquarel and trying also to batch a bit uh, the, the face with the caterpillar that had these uh, two long eyes, drop eyes, uh, that makes him uh, different. You know, that's that's what character that characterizes him. So in every world, if we see those long, long-shaped eyes of this suicidal sheep, well, it's Frank. So uh, uh, yeah. Just to make something sure, because I don't know if you followed the project from from closely or not, but just to be sure on the story side, um, he has to change appearances because every time he when he meets Victor the. Uh, angel figures, uh, he will give him a, a timer, something that will every five minutes, roughly, uh, send him to the next world. So, and every five minutes he will change appearances and the world is living in. So, we, in the pilot, we have the first world, which is his reality. He comes from the island and he's thrown through a tornado, a magic tornado, to the first world out of many for the feature film. Uh, in which he becomes a caterpillar. So he's very tiny and he's pink, so uh, it's green, actually. No, no, it's green, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's why we had to be sure that we recognize him as he goes through many, many iterations of character designs. He has to be a robot, he has to be a cup of tea, he has to be many, many things. And every time we have to recognize that he's Frank, instantly. So that's always the struggle we had, and that's also why we had to find some very specific ways of recognizing him without being too obvious that it's written on his face, like, yeah, I'm Frank. So. That's the, the teardrop eyes was something very strong that works well every time. And then, and then we started to make a 3D model out of it. So just to, to show you the process uh, of design between uh, Angela and Sarah, so that they, uh, the, well, you can explain. Yeah. Yeah, this bit. yeah, this is, well, we thought it was like uh, interesting to show a bit uh, of uh, workflow. So yeah, that was the first, uh, model Angela sent me and of, or, of course like uh, drawing we, we, uh, I, I try to be as precise as, as I can but there is always interpretation in between so uh, Angela is really uh, making a super good job uh, like with, with the modeling but we also need uh, some uh, uh, back and forth of correction so you can see just uh, <laughs> how we are dealing uh, she, she, she's working from uh, Montreal is She's in Montreal, Canada, yeah, Canada so from Canada. No, no so, so we are like uh, re using the wrist pencil <laughs> for for the feedback. So just uh, so you can see like adjustments uh, here. Like we really want to have uh, the 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 shape of, of the head to be a, a triangle. Uh, <laughs> like uh, at first she was trying to keep the the rounded eyes because it's of course uh, well. That's no, the normal way, and that's better for rigging, but in that character, we will just make everyone's life difficult <laughs> and make them not around. So the rigger will have a hard time to do it, but that's life. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is for the profile too. So also in 3D, I, uh, I, I saw that uh, my design was a bit too tall. It wasn't working, so I was asking her for Less tall also, well, uh, of course, it, it has to have uh, hair. So what you see, uh, it's, uh, it's just geometry that, that has to represent hair, but uh, it will not be like that, of course. <laughs> so yeah, the idea is that uh, his uh, ears are like uh, completely buried into his uh, lot of hair. And, uh, and yeah, so what character is? Uh, Frank and will, uh, I, I guess, reappear in uh, other worlds is that his head is completely like, stuck in, in his fur, like he's, like, uh, he's trapped in his body. So that, that's kind of the idea. That's also uh, why the caterpillar worked, because it's also like that. Like he's, he's a, a, a guy that's trapped by his destiny and he wants somehow to find a, a way uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's very beautiful, I like <laughs> So uh, we have also some examples for secondary characters. That was um, in the jungle scene, there is a, also like a, a, a mean character that tries to eat the, the caterpillar. So uh, it's the frog. Uh, we had uh, Pablo designing a first version of it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we had this at first from Pablo, and uh, then Sarah also proposed uh, another design which was quite <laughs> more monstrous and uh, based on uh, Frank Arnold's reference and did kind yeah. of designs. Yeah, oh, I forgot to give you that. Yeah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really a fan of Frank. I don't know if you know him, but it's a Belgian Belgian uh, drawer was. <laughs> uh, but uh, well, at least in Belgium, he's like a super like home, <laughs> and uh, he makes really creepy, uh, awesome characters. And uh, so this was completely inspired in one drawing of him. And uh, Mathieu likes them both, so we made a mix. <laughs> and the mix was. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> no. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, then we tried, we tried to have like the slimy, creepy one with the head of Pablo that was better than mine. So, um, and uh, we tried to make uh, one new creature with a re really like, uh, how do you say, um, the neck that is a uh, uh, squishy, stuff, squishy huh? neck, like really with the wrinkles and uh, he, he had like he has the ability like to stretch his, his hair like really long. So it, it has to be scary. So uh, that was. Again, I can't wait for uh, maybe next year when someone will talk about the rigs of the movie. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the little uh, stuff you see inside his belly are caterpillars. So uh, it was inspired from a, a Costa Rican frog that is completely transparent. You can see, you can see his, like the, the inside, like the, the digestive uh, uh, system and everything. And when I saw that, I was like, Oh, what if we see the caterpillar he's eaten? <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of the idea. And we also designed the, the, the two worlds we have, so the island uh, and the jungle. So uh, we'll just show the jungle right now because it's the more advanced and various thing we have. So let's start with it. So again, it's uh, your designs, mostly. So we went to many, many colors iterations also. We started with a very real jungle with a red or pink caterpillar. Tara is an albinos character, so she's always white and she's a butterfly in this world. So uh, then Sarah, you started to uh, design also the vegetation, like the yeah. flowers and plants. So just, uh, so what was the inspiration for the jungle? So at, at first, yes, it was like kind of a normal jungle, but we really want uh, uh, like the audience to understand that he's going into a really new world that has nothing to do with this, like with, uh, it has to be new. It's not, it's not reality. It's a new world made of a lot of new things. So uh, we made a, a ref um, style board, uh, reference board, like with, pink forest and mushrooms and slimy stuff and how to make this jungle weird and beautiful and like so so yeah so we, we uh, oh that this one was one of the first where we kind of uh, really saw the how we wanted the jungle to be we wanted to be bubbly and slimy and uh, with a lot of mushrooms <laughs> Uh, and, and pink. <laughs> so maybe PG-13 on this one, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and the bubbles was also like to have a reminder that we are in a washing machine world, so it has bubbles everywhere. So it's a bit uh, trippy, but uh, I think uh, it, 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 it can work. So yeah, that's when they are on the top of the jungle. Uh, uh, yeah, that's with the frog, and, and Frank, that's uh, just uh, in front of him when we are the cat caterpillars. This is col a color board for another scene when Frank uh, meets Terra. Meets Terra, <coughs> exactly. Uh, that's, yeah, for the beginning of the jungle when, uh, when uh, Frank is on a leaf. So, yeah. So the idea is that since Frank uh, works really well being green, we wanted him to pop out, always, so the jungle being pink would really help us for that. So that, that, this is a layout uh, uh, drawing, so you can see the t uh, all the, where the history uh, begins and, and, and ends, I guess. Uh, 
that's all the phase. So we are we are uh, um, beginning almost on the top of the tree in a leaf, and we fall on the uh, where you see all the branches, and we fall where you see uh, the mushrooms, and we fall again, yep. and then we go up again. So it's like everything is going on uh, on the single tree, almost. Yeah, spoiler alert again. Uh, it's, uh, so just to finish with designs, we also have the, the, the final character, which is Tara, the, the girl Frank will has to fall in love with. Uh, he will met, meet her in the jungle. She's a, she's a butterfly. We have also lots of ideas and references. Uh, she's a strong feminine character. She's uh, going through worlds for a long time now, and she's enjoying it. She's uh, almost became an addict out of it. She really liked this, so we had references like her for, uh, from Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Minds, for example, those kind of characters, which, which are a bit bubbly and funny, but yet you feel that something is wrong about them, you don't really know why. Um, so we had also lots of iteration on designs, uh, just to find the right shape of the face, or also the right body shapes, but it was uh, maybe too, too young and cute, so we tried to make her more feminine also, so she became more like this and a bit more insecty also, even if this was a bit extreme. And then we finally had this, again from you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this went also to 3D. Oh, I don't have the 3D images for this. So. I didn't have the, oh. the renders of... Uh, but you, you can see them on, on the blog so, and on the, on the cloud, so it's, it's possible to check it out. But it's, um, well, it's, it's working quite well. I'm spinning it a bit up. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Questions. So um, I'm just wondering, is there an Icelandic guy in the room? Uh, especially Yalti. <laughs> He's not. Okay, so he, he died. I don't know. <laughs> He's, He's sleeping. So he, he was supposed to talk about uh, the animation. So I'll do it, but <laughs> we don't have a lot of animation. Uh, so uh, maybe that's why you skipped it. So <laughs> I don't know. No, I will. Um, so we, uh, I just want to, to focus on Terra's uh, case, which is, uh, so again, she's a butterfly, and we're trying to make it, uh, to feel the scale of it. So uh, butterflies and insects are very small and very fast. So uh, we just, I just want to show a few uh, examples of real references from, uh, from butterflies, which are, is it playing? Yeah. So this is yeah, very small, very nerv uh, nervous, shaky, uh, very impatient, and that's, that totally fits the character, which has to be like always uh, uh, searching for the next thing. She's very, very uh, anxious, and even though she's enjoying it, she's like a junkie. She's uh, always search for the next world, and she always wants to experience more out of life. So we also had the crane flies for references. Uh, I don't know if you see it. Yeah. So it's uh, again a bit, uh, a bit shaky, a bit nervous. Always, uh, always searching for the right place to put their legs. Always, um, uh, almost not confident, but always wanted more. So that's that's very interesting characters uh, for motion references because those guys always look very nice and and sweet. You don't want to hurt them, uh, even though they look like big mosquitoes. So. And so uh, Yati worked on this. Is it playing? I think it is. No, it's not. It's playing. So this is the first version, the first test, animation test out of Terra's, um, which are very rough things, but already gives a good feeling out of it. And we were testing this for the rigs also, seeing if the model will uh, support this if the designs will hold up, and actually it worked quite well already, so... We were discussing also if the, the wings should bend or not, if uh, it has to be like a real butterfly wings, which usually don't bend a lot because it's very, very small. Um, so yeah, this is... We don't have a lot of things to show because we are still in pre-production, so we don't have a lot of animation, but, well, you see most of them now. <laughs> Uh, and just 
just to say like uh, this test animation test with uh, rig, uh, rig rig test and everything has been like super useful to see like if the proportion of the characters work like because sometimes like go crazy on design and then you cannot make make it walk or whatever yeah. <laughs> or it doesn't work so uh, and it already raises questions about potential uh, render issues like motion blur effect if you have a close-up of a butterfly that actually goes as fast as a real butterfly you have crazy motion blurs happening uh, that goes also with render problems you always have so it's uh, it's already good to tackle uh, technical issues on those design process so just have a, a small eye candy also like <laughs> we, we love this so you can keep <laughs> Watching it, it's yeah, awesome. So, <laughs> um, and then there is the storyboarding. So we are heavily working on storyboarding as we write. So that's a bit complicated, but it works quite well because it helps us to really realize what the pace, what the tempo of the movie is, which is not always obvious when you go through a through a script, especially on an animation project. So you need a final script, and we almost have it now. So that's good. Um, <laughs> we are uh, writing and rewriting uh, the, the film even when we storyboard because then you make uh, other decisions. The script is the plot, it's what, about what you should see and feel, but then you have to decide how you, you will show this and make the audience feel it. So you sometimes you rewrite also just by framing. So that's, that's a very interesting process. But it's also a very obscure process when you're not used to see storyboards or animatics because it's very cold, there's no colors, there's no motion, the sound is very, very crappy. I recorded the voices. The animatic you'll see is with Francesco's voices, Pablo's voices, uh, uh, Sarah's voice also. So that's not the real voices. That's not the good uh, actor's um, intentions. So that's, that f always feels a bit off, but it's very, very useful for us just to see how long the shots are, how many people we see talking, just to list all the shots, all the production process is very, very more clear with those kind of things. So this is uh, a few drawings from Matthias, Matthias Mendoria. So he made uh, a very, very tremendous work on this. He drew like almost, I think he's close to 1,000 drawings now, so it, because we, I keep asking him to redo stuff. So um, yeah, this is just one frame per second of a few, of a, a third of what he's done. So it's like <laughs> a tremendous, um, you see, you've seen all the movie right now, so yeah. enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it really helps to edit it and, and put this storyboard into, into an animatic to really clear length, framing voices and all the, those things that are raised upon it. For music also, if you have a composer working on it, it helps him to see where are the key moments in the, in the movie. It's better than on a, on a script. So now I will show you the jungle scene, if you agree on it. <laughs> It's uh, only the beginning of it, so just uh, you don't see the island part. So when Frank meets Victor and he's offered this special offer deal that will send him into multiple worlds, he's sent into a giant, beautiful tornado that brings him here. So it just he was a, a, butterfly, uh, a sheep just before for 40 years, and now he wakes up as a caterpillar in a jungle. So uh, can we dim the lights, please? Ooh. Oh. 
Oi, stay in line, bro. What line? Mo I, I wasn't like moving. moving more. I mean, I'm, I'm not lying. Stay in line, bro. Move, 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 come on, what's, what's happening? Move, Let me, nah. What's happening? Oh, nah, nah, no, bro. come on, what's happening? I'm not one of you, bro. What's happening? No, I'm, me, move, 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 I am a sheep. Who do you think you are? There is always a smart ass every day, but he's, he's decent. She's here, she's here. Oh, 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 Special delivery there, huh? Who? Me? You? From Victor! <laughs> Who's Victor? Who are you? Uh, I'm Tara. Love to stay in chat, though. But we're on the clock, aren't we? Chop chop! Chop? <laughs> no need for that, I'm sure. So many lives, so little time. That's it. So <laughs> So I don't know if Francesco is here, but yeah, yeah I see you. So thank you a lot for your performance. <laughs> So this is uh, like you've seen four, I think it's four minutes of the movie, so uh, it's half of the jungle scene. Um, and as you see, it's, it already helps a lot to see what happens, what, what are the tempo, the rhythm, uh, what assets you need, stuff like that. So and for, from a script point of view, it helps a lot to see if, if our ideas work out, out of a movie. So now we are starting production out of this, so we are starting uh, to do the layout uh, of the movie. We have the first scenes that, uh, of the jungle scene that are uh, starting on layout process uh, since last week. Uh, we also have the casting. We meet the first batch of actors uh, on Tuesday, so we also will have plans uh, recording session with them. Uh, we have all the animation work uh, to focus on and the render lighting also, which has not started yet. So at least research for it. So that's our targets for uh, the next year. So, <laughs> see you next year with the movie. <laughs> so I don't know if we, I don't know if we have time for, for questions. Uh, do we have any questions regarding the script, the development of the movie? Yes? Yes. I actually have two questions. Okay. One is uh, this uh, character. Yeah. yeah. Just two quick questions. One is uh, the, the butterfly. Why did you give her only four feet? <laughs> four legs. Well, actually, they, they have only four feet. Uh, Yes, that, that might be really weird. I've, like, uh, I saw a lot of references. There is one, uh, there is butterflies with six and with four. <laughs> there is both of them. You are a biologist? Yeah. Yes, you are. Maybe. <laughs> okay, well, then, then I might.
completely be wrong, but at least in the reference uh, I've seen, at visually, I see four. <laughs> the, the, really? The, the, really? Mov the movie I showed, the reference I've shown, uh, they only have four. No. I counted them. I did also. Yeah, you yes. did also? Yeah, yeah because I... I I'm are, 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 are they like little and like that, or I don't know? <laughs> uh, well, uh, when you look through that, the other thing is uh, the, the idea of the laundromat. I, I thought it was really nice because the washing machines, what they do is turn around all the time. So the result is that they basically uh, dismiss gravity or shake in a way that is uh, not of our world. And uh, I, I thought you may wanted to use this feature, which is really yeah. curious to, uh, difficult to render and to show. Are you planning to do this? Yes, we do. <laughs> but we, we, we use those symbols uh, really to, for multiple reasons, but we always uh, kept on the writing process those symbols of uh, washing machine and laundry thing to mix stuff together, cleaning, uh, that is uh, really also somehow related to the love feeling that is you you, you take stuff you mix them it, it can be on several levels so we always try to keep uh, a vocabulary a symbol vocab vocabulary out of this through the movie and victors so i was searching for the so all butterfly have six no i'm asking because <laughs> now, I, now I we have to correct it so Yeah, yeah. I, I know, but I was really surprised watching uh, butterfly references oh, by, fa by counting four. No, no, there are four. <clears throat> <laughs> and guys, guys, it's fantasy. Yeah, we do it at the top. Oh. <laughs> Our butterflies talk. So. <laughs> oh, well, uh, personally, uh, I, I like like uh, with with four legs. It's just like for the silhouette and for the expression. It's uh, some sometimes a bit um, easier for the animator and also for a lecture. It's easier to have four than six. When you have six, it becomes like a lot of legs, and you just see that a lot of legs and less um, expression. Uh, but I'm not saying that. Uh, it shouldn't have uh, have six, uh, but you can say it. Like I, I just I just don't see what uh, two more legs would add to the expression or the design or like in a functionality thinking artsy way. Like uh, it's it's not, but this jungle is not correct at all. Like it's pink, uh, the, like uh, so. Anyway, <laughs> from a bi biology point of view, I think our sheep are also quite. Not right. So anyway, uh, other question maybe? Yes. Have you seen the movie Cloud Atlas? Because there's uh, also uh, what what movie? Cloud Atlas. Oh uh, no, I didn't. You did? Yes. It's yeah. a oh, it's she a did. really long movie, but it's yeah. a, the story is really hard to uh, follow. But it's a bit similar. So if you. Uh, Okay. I, watch it I was, uh, uh, yeah, I remember when it was out and it uh, was like it's more than three hours, something yeah, like this. So I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that's one of those films where the, the idea is really great, but you sort of get lost in watching these people and thinking, oh, that's the same guy, that's the same actor. And, but he, he's a different guy now or he's a related or so. So we, what we try to do is, is sort of let the, the technique get out of the way so that, the, so that you can just be in the story, uh, which is basically also the answer to the four or six legs thing, I think, because uh, it's just, it is fantasy and it's about the feeling that the characters bring across. And it shouldn't get in a way, you know, that you're watching, oh, that's the same guy, or, but his, his looks are different now. So, uh, and the same actually also with the laundromat thing with the washing machine. It, it's, the symbolism is exactly right because it's about changing shape, about washing yourself clean, and then you know coming out in a different way. Um, and it's a cycle, which life is. And um, so in that way, we try to fit it in and also make it funny and also make it exciting, but only at the moment where it really matters and you know you don't get confused or something. It just makes some mystery or suspense or something. But yeah, that's um, yeah. It's just falling into falling into place at the moment, I think, all those things. 
Uh, do we have time for one more question, or that's it? Tom? Yeah, I have one thing. <laughs> you have a question? <laughs> oh, uh, one thing I wanted to show, and what? Sure, sure. The internet is very beautiful. On the screen? Yeah. What I would like to add to what these two people did say is that uh, in January, February, they were working on the initial concept and we had really no idea how to get this to work with all those teams. They had a workshop for three days in the Blender Institute, uh, Esther and Mathieu, and they both came up with this brilliant idea which really started working magically with this, this laundromat, with the laundromat manager, with the weird Cupid style love guy with the ship, because suddenly you could see it, how it could work. And that's really important that you have a script or a storyline and characters and a number of events that sound absurdist and at the same time it's totally logical. And that's the whole magic of this film and the storytelling. We will do crazy things and you might think, what? Come on. But it is interesting and engaging and you want to see the next and the next and the next. But that's what we are going to do. So thank you. When I asked uh, Mathieu to prepare this, I forgot that there's also a production side of the whole story. Which says we did a whole crowdfunding and we gathered money and supporters. And in the whole theme of being open, I wanted to show a little bit the campaign statistics. So where did we end up with? Uh, what are we doing at the moment? So how are we doing? So um, I think people remember the campaign. We had this uh, big statistics online. People could subscribe to be a supporter for a monthly contribution of 10 euros. Uh, people could give uh, for 18 months a contribution to get the credit already. Or you had to pay for 18 months and you would get the credit later. Or you could get a gold or a bronze or silver credit. There are a number of perks for which people could subscribe. And the target was to get 10,000 people on board, which would give us sufficient regular income to have all those teams to start working on the feature film. So in the end, we had uh, 2,943 subscribers, or people who pledged to subscribe, and they didn't all pay. Uh, this was really awesome with a lot of people, but unfortunately, that's not really making a feature film. So that's was the reason why we moved on to make a pilot. So there's a number of others. There's some gold sponsors, uh, uh, custom payments, which was not really fitting in a category. The credit sponsors who paid for 18 months, and people who paid 20 euro for the download only option. Oh, the order is silver and the bronze sponsors. So all in all, we did gather a lot of money, and this is the biggest uh, crowdfunder, Blender Foundation or Blender Institute ever did. So we can continue this project, we are happy to continue it, but we are not there yet. Of all the people who did pay the initial uh, 45 euro for uh, cloud subscription and for three months access, we still need about 70% to renew. So there are a thousand people who have renewed, a little, a little bit over a thousand. There's one, two hundred people who paid already for 18 months. And we still want to have another thousand people at least to renew their cloud subscription. Which is important for us. But that means that we can continue and hire more people, hire more developers, hire more artists. And make this film really awesome and present that next year in July. So if you see this, if you see this online, go to cloud.blender.org, uh, click on the renew or add a new subscription, and we will be awesome. Thank you.
And just a final word, uh, I didn't uh, uh, go to the Blender development process of the film because I had to choose for the talk. Uh, I prefer to focus on the artistic part, but if you want to talk with me after about what we are trying to make also for the tools of the movie, because we are heavily working on this with the developers, well, feel free to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you.